2011 Margaret Brent Award recipient, Karen J. Mathis. Whether literally or figuratively, Karen Mathis has always been a big sister. She has been there to look after the interests, concerns, and needs of those who follow behind her. Born in Providence, Rhode Island, she is the eldest of three daughters of Charlie and Betty Young. A product of the often nomadic lifestyle of a career military family, Karen wasn't able to feel settled until high school when her father retired in Colorado Springs. Even though her only exposure to a career in law was through fictional characters like Atticus Finch, Karen knew by age 12 that she wanted to help people. Karen attended the University of Denver through its Scholars Program Scholarship, where she graduated cum laude. It was during this time that she became involved in the Denver chapter of Big Brothers and Big Sisters, thus dedicating herself to a lifelong commitment of helping youth. She then was awarded a law school scholarship to the University of Colorado in Boulder and received the law school's highest honor for all-around merit. Excelling at tax law, Karen graduated and in 1975, she became the first woman to join the tax department at KPMG. Her managing partner used to introduce her by saying, this is Karen, she's a woman, but she's both a lawyer and accountant. Subsequently, Karen moved on to form and manage a number of firms in Colorado that created opportunities for women to practice part-time. Her focus was always on the quality of work and not the volume of hours. This allowed for a law firm culture that enabled partners to spend time with their families and cultivate community involvement. She joined with other women lawyers to form the Colorado Women's Bar Association, which remains one of Colorado's preeminent professional groups for women. An active member of the ABA for over 30 years, Karen's involvement began with the ABA Young Lawyers Division and continued with many leadership positions, eventually becoming the chair of the ABA House of Delegates. In 2006, she became the third woman to serve as president of the American Bar Association and used her influence to advocate on behalf of women and children. She made it her mission to appoint women to leadership positions within the ABA. Her ABA presidential initiatives epitomize her personal beliefs in service and the power of law. From the second season of service, which encouraged senior lawyers to continue utilizing their skills for the betterment of society, to the pivotal Youth at Risk initiative, which has now become a permanent ABA commission, her impact has been felt throughout the association as well as the legal community. Whether traveling to China for a conference on youth, or to Ecuador to work on laws benefiting victims of domestic violence and human trafficking, her dedication in assisting the young and underserved knows no limit. Prior to completing her term as ABA president, she was among those who conceived of the Direct Women Institute, an initiative that helps women lawyers attain positions on corporate boards. This initiative was inspired by studies which found that there is a direct correlation between the number of women on a company's board and its financial performance, as well as the future number of women in its senior management ranks. Karen subsequently served as the executive director and CEO of Central and Eastern European Law Initiative, where she continued her tireless efforts to protect women and children deprived of education and legal rights. She currently continues her devotion to youth mentorship as president and CEO of Big Brothers and Big Sisters of America. She has said, as women lawyers, we are here in large numbers. We are here to stay. We are committed to the legal profession, the law, and our complex lives the world will be better for our efforts. It is because of her efforts that the American Bar Association Commission on Women in the Profession is honored to present its 2011 Margaret Brent Women Lawyers of Achievement Award to Karen J. Mathis. I love you too, Bob. Dear friend Bobby Liebenberg, I want to thank you and the Commission on Women in Profession, the inimitable Carol Dinkins, a Brent herself, who orchestrated my nomination together with all of the amazing folks in this room and beyond who helped with that. Justice O'Connor, thank you for the amazing letter you wrote on behalf of my nomination. Receiving it would have been award enough. Uh, you grace us with your presence today. 
and we all are inspired by your lifetime of devotion to our profession and this country. Thank you. I have to say that I blushed to read the kind of things that you nominators said about me. I will just tell you that someday I hope to deserve all of them. Finally, well, not quite finally, uh, it is such a pleasure and an honor to be on this dais, the women who have received this award today. Finally, I would like to introduce my family who travel from Colorado to be with me today, and many fine, fine friends. My sister, Nancy Young, was with me in the passport picture in 1953. I was the big one, she was the little one. And she is here with me today. Also, my lifelong supporter, my mentor, my partner, my friend, Lorea Rulian. Both of them have come from Colorado and all of my friends as far away as Bermuda and Texas and other places. I'd like them to stand and receive your appreciation. Thank you for everything. As you might imagine, this is not the first time I've been on this dais. I uh, was fortunate enough to lead the commission for three wonderful years, and so I've had the luxury of meeting many incredible women who have received this award. And just like all of the women I had the pleasure of calling to say that they would be a Brent, when Bobby called me, I said, what, me? And I suspect that every woman who receives this award will continue to be amazed that she could be singled out in this fashion when, as Paulette said, there are so many wonderful, incredible, deserving women who should receive it. But I will tell you that while it's not the first time I've been on a Brent Diaz, this one is really over the moon. <laughs> and I am both humbled and thrilled to be here. I have known for many years that the Maggies are the most select fraternity of women lawyers and jurists, and so I will work for the rest of my days to bring honor to this award. There have been so many memorable Brents who have inspired us with their stories. One in particular stands out to me. Dubby Roundtree was in a wheelchair and legally blind when she graced us and said, be about something. Her words inspired me then, and they inspire me today. You know, there have been many memorable moments in my life. You saw a few of them. And perhaps many of you have heard me say, there were three driving influences in my life. The nuns who educated me, the United States military in which four generations of my family have served, and a close-knit family. The nuns taught me my first Latin words other than the liturgy of the mass, noblesse oblige. The military tradition taught me honor and country. My family taught me to respect all people, regardless of their circumstances in life, and to support and protect my younger siblings. In preparing these remarks, I also recognize the need to acknowledge one other group that influenced my life and my decisions enormously, and they are my mentors. A Rhode Island spinster and a former socialite was my first non-family mentor. Miss Howard took an early interest in me, opening doors to museums and music and art that my family could not have afforded. My eighth grade teacher, Mr. Pugel, believed in me and taught me to speak publicly without the and ums and uh, uh, ums. That led me to the speech team in high school, and my mother said, I've never stopped arguing since. <laughs> my high school counselor, a woman, who helped me secure the scholarship to university, the first in my family to attend. My poli-sci professor, who agreed I should go to law school. My law professor, Ted Fifeless, who encouraged me to be a tax lawyer. My basketball coach, 
who said I had all the right equipment to play ball, big hands and big feet. And then there were my mentors in law, Sandra Rothenberg, my very first law partner and the best litigator I've ever known. She took a rookie under her wings and she gave me so much. And my last law partners in the woman-owned law firm we founded, Christina Feifless, who's here with her husband David today, and Roseanne Hall. They were both mentees and mentors through the interesting and sometimes challenging times of creating a woman-owned commercial law firm. I've been blessed by incredible mentors through my bar work. Without the early support and guidance of a Colorado lawyer, Linda Donnelly, and so many others, I might never have met the thousands of young lawyers who toiled in public service projects through the ABA Young Lawyers Division. I wouldn't have had so much opportunity in my life without those early mentors who welcomed me to the American Bar Association and made it a lifelong pursuit of happiness for me. So many great lawyers have come into my life and enriched it through the bar. John Kersel and I met doing membership work, as did Jim Silkenet and I. Armando Laza, a friend of over 30 years who taught me the beauty of diversity. The women who preceded me as president of the American Bar Association, Roberta Ramo Cooper and Martha Barnett, who gave me so much advice, support, and wisdom. I thank you. And I must recognize my editors and guides to this day who are not with us, and that is Marsha Rose and Jerry Shestak. I'm sending them my love back in Philadelphia. This list goes on and on, and many of you, dear friends and mentors, I cannot mention today. In return for the gifts you have given me, I have striven to be a mentor to others in my life and work. And so it seems fitting that I will conclude my career leading Big Brothers Big Sisters of America. It's over 100 years old, and my first association with it was 42 years ago when I was a big sister while at the University of Denver. I saw its power in the life of my own nephew, and I've come full surface, cir circle rather, to lead this impressive organization, the premier one-on-one -on -one mentoring organization in America. Let me conclude by repeating W. Roundtree's exhortation, be about something, and let me suggest that you do it by mentoring, not just other lawyers, but also young people. Children facing adversity, those in single parent at homes, who come from poverty, who are in our failing schools, who have a parent who's incarcerated, or perhaps the child of a serviceman or woman who is deployed to war. You see, our youth are our most important asset. We have the skills and we have the talent, we have the wisdom to make a palpable difference in their lives. And if you say to me, I'm sorry, I can't be a mentor just now, then please support a mentoring relationship and become a donor. Right now, my own organization is mentoring almost a quarter of a million children a year, but we have 26,000 children on our waiting list. So be a part of the solution. Be a donor or be a volunteer. The many mentors in my life have cheered for me, they've taught me, They've guided me, both gently and wisely. They saw things in me I could not see in myself. I owe them so much. I wouldn't be who I am today without the sagacious intervention of my mentors. And you wouldn't be who you are today either. So please pay it forward and mentor a child. I'd like to thank the commission, you particularly Bobby, for this honor, and I will strive to deserve it every day and to be about something. Thank you.